Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how exactly do we use these multimeters. We're gonna be looking at how we measure voltage, current, frequency, as well as continuity on these multimeters. The way that we're gonna go about this is we're gonna take a look at exactly how we wire these multimeters in or onto our circuit if we're measuring either voltage or current. We're also gonna look at the different ports that we use as well as even the different manual ranging settings that can be selected on our multimeter. Lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a few different examples talking about measuring each one of these. For example, I want to know if I in fact fixed the problem that I have on this radio controlled nitro vehicle do I now have power from the battery pack which is mounted in the back here can I get that power all the way to my receiver which is mounted in the middle how do I make sure that there is a connection between this point of the vehicle as well as this point of our vehicle we're gonna be taking a look at that and I don't want it to just be about radio controlled applications I'm also going to be figuring out how much power does this high powered 1000 lumen output light produce we're gonna measure the amount of current in this flashlight. I've never done this before for this flashlight. I'm very interested in knowing how much current this flashlight actually consumes. All this and more once we figure out exactly how we are able to measure voltage and current with our multimeter. Let's go ahead and figure that out right now. On the left hand side of our board, we're gonna be looking at how we actually wire our multimeter into our circuit and also what ports on our multimeter do we use. Some multimeters actually have a ton of different ports that we can use and depending on what you are measuring, you have to select the correct port. On the right hand side of our whiteboard, we're gonna be talking about settings. Some multimeters are auto ranging and some are manual ranging and you need to go and make sure on a manual that you select the correct setting so that you maximize your precision. We'll be looking at this very shortly. Let's start off by looking at this diagram here on the left hand center side of our whiteboard. Here we want to measure voltage. This is the most common parameter to measure on your multimeter and you're going to use the most common port on your multimeter which is going to be that voltage port. I can grab a multimeter here and our voltage port that we have is on the right hand side where you're going to want to make sure that you're using the correct port in order to measure voltage. Now let's talk about our circuit that we're gonna be looking at for these next couple examples. The top side of our example, we have a resistive load. This could be something as simple as an incandescent bulb. On the bottom side of our example, we have the voltage source of our circuit, which could be represented by a battery pack. And on the left-hand side of our circuit, we do have a switch that can be either in the on position or into the off position. And it's critical depending on what you're trying to measure. Now when you're measuring as a first example here on our voltage measurements, if you want to measure a resistive load, the voltage across that load, you simply go and take one of the leads from the common negative port on your multimeter and bring it to the negative side on your load. And then you go and bring the positive lead on your multimeter and you bring that to the positive side of your load. The next thing you wanna make sure you do is have that switch in the on position so that electricity is able to flow. Cause if you don't have electricity flowing across your load, you're not going to measure any voltage that is dropping across these couple points. Now if we look at the second example that we have here which is going directly to our voltage source we can actually measure voltage across our battery pack either loaded or unloaded simply by switching the circuit either off or on. If we open up the circuit we can measure the unloaded voltage which is done by simply taking your positive lead going to one side of the battery and our negative lead to the other side of the battery and we can measure directly the voltage of our source. If we want to measure the loaded voltage of our circuit, we simply go and switch this into the on position. This way electricity is now gonna be flowing through our circuit and we can measure directly the loaded voltage of our circuit. Now let's take a look at how we measure current within a circuit. The first point to point out is that we are going to be changing our leads and we're not gonna be using this voltage port no longer. We're gonna actually switch that and move into our current port, which has a maximum limitation of 10 amps. And that value is very critical. Some multimeters are fused 
at 10 amps and some may say 10 amps but are unfused. The biggest rule here is that you don't want to be measuring currents that are higher than 10 amps. You want to make sure that you avoid that at all costs. Really understand your circuit and make sure that it is not going to pull more current than whatever your multimeter is rated for and specifically whatever that port is rated for. We are using the 10 amp port here. That means that our circuit cannot draw more than 10 amps. Now the next major point is that we've just measured voltage by placing our leads right directly across our load and right directly across our source, our voltage source. This is adding almost like a parallel circuit. We don't break the circuit in any way, shape or form on the right hand side here. However, when we measure current, we're actually gonna have to break into our circuit simply by removing a chunk of it and then going and adding our multimeter leads. So you can see on the left hand side, we added our positive lead and then we have the power coming out here from our negative terminal and then going directly towards our load. It doesn't matter which way you have these leads. If you have it incorrectly, you'll simply just get a negative value read on the multimeter and then you would know that current is actually flowing in the opposite direction than what you first originally thought. Now that we broke the circuit, we added our multimeter, our multimeter becomes part of the circuit. Electricity is going to flow through the multimeter which is then going to be measured and then through the rest of the circuit and back to the battery pack. They have to make sure for measuring current that the switch is actually on the on position so that you are able to measure the flow of electricity as it flows through the circuit here. Otherwise, you're going to just be measuring zero amps on the multimeter. On the right hand side of our board, we are taking a look at the manual versus auto ranging multimeter. Now, if you have an auto ranging multimeter, all you need to do is select the voltage setting. For example, if you wanna measure voltage of either DC or AC, if you're measuring those parameters, as long as you're not measuring a voltage that's higher and exceeds the limitation of your multimeter, you'll be okay. However, it's not the case for a manual multimeter where you have to manually select the correct range. Now, as you can see, we have the symbol here for voltage, which represents DC, where you have that solid line and below it, you have a dashed line. And the opposite side, we have the symbol used for alternating voltage, alternating current voltage. So this is AC voltage, which is represented by our swiggly line there. Now you can see the two settings for AC voltage is 750 and 200 and depending on what you're measuring you'd have to know which one of those to select. Now the rule to follow when you're looking at voltage to be measured or anything for that matter to be measured, current would follow the same sort of steps as well, is you want to be using the smallest range that is greater than the measured value. We can run through an example. If you use 50 volts as an example, we have a bunch of different DC voltages here on the board, ranging from 1,000, 220, 2,000 millivolts, and lastly, 200 millivolts. If we follow our rule, we want to select the smallest range that is higher than the value that we're measuring. 50 volts is our measured value, and you should know approximately how much voltage you're actually gonna be measuring. If we're measuring 50 volts, the next range that would be acceptable for us would be 200. That's the smallest range that is above the measured value. 20 volts would be too small and we would not read the correct value under 20 volts. Therefore, we would have to select our dial to 200 volts. Now imagine you have a 1.5 volt battery that you're trying to measure the voltage of. What do you select for your setting using the 1.5 volt battery? Well, 1.5 volt battery is going to be less than 2000 millivolts, which represents two volts. We could use that setting because 200 millivolts would be too low. Therefore, this is the next range that would be best for us. Now, what happened if we ended up measuring at 1000 volts or 200 volts for our 1.5 volt battery? Well, every time you go and have a step up in your range, you're gonna lose the precision. Imagine that 1.5 volt battery under our 2000 millivolt setting. We're gonna get 1500 being measured or read out there. 1500 represents 1.500 volts. It's not 1.501, it's 1.500 volts. If we go to that next setting, which is gonna be the 20 volt setting, we're gonna measure 1.50 volts. 
we lose a decimal place. We don't know what happens after that last zero. If we go to that next setting, we're gonna measure 1.5 volts. We don't know if it's 1.53 volts or 1.48 volts. It simply rounds to 1.5. And lastly, if you go to that 1000 volt setting, you're gonna only see one digit. It's gonna round that 1.5 and it's gonna round it to two. So it looks like that 1.5 volt battery is actually two volts and it's not. It's actually far from that. That's a big margin of error if you use the incorrect setting there. So that's why we want to make sure we're using the correct setting so we get the best amount of precision. Now the last point that I want to make is about negative values. We did talk about this very briefly. If you get a negative value that just means that you have your terminals reversed. Simply take the leads on your multimeter and switch them and you'll get a positive value. Here we're going to measure the voltage across a couple different batteries including even this double A. Now the first thing that we need to do is figure out exactly which setting we're going to use. In the case of our battery here we're going to go and use a setting that allows us to measure the correct amount of voltage across these batteries. Now I'm going to first start off with the 20 volt setting. This way we can measure our four cell lithium polymer battery pack which is going to come out to somewhere in the neighborhood of 14.8 volts. Why? Because it says that here. So let's even add a plus or minus range to this and our 20 volt should be the best selection based on knowing that voltage. All we need to do is get this ready so that we can plug in our positive lead here and then use the negative lead. We're going to go and attach this and then we get our voltage reading out from that. When we hold our leads right on the battery terminals it comes out to the value that you see there on the screen. Now if we go and try the same thing to our 22.2 volt battery, we know this is going to be out of range, but I guess what happens if we do this anyway? We use our 22.2 volt battery, connect our positive terminal, and then we also hold our negative terminal on here, and we get the out of range error. This is telling us that we don't have the correct setting selected, therefore we got to move up to the next interval. We go and select the next step up, which is our 200 volt setting, and we measure the voltage across this battery, and we're getting 22.6. Six, but notice how we lose a decimal point. We don't know if it's 22.58 or 22.62. It could be any one of those and being rounded to that 0.6. That is part of the limitations of this specific unit. Let's go ahead and take a look at our single AA battery here. If we go and cap this guy off, set him off to the side, and then introduce our AA battery pack, and what we want to do is we want to select the best setting for this specific AA. We know this AA, it says right on it, it's a 1.5 volt. So let's consider the 1.5 volt. We're going to go and use that setting of 2000 millivolt. That is 2.000 volts. We then go ahead, apply our leads to this battery and measure the voltage across it. We are getting 1601 volts. That's millivolt. That represents obviously 1.601 volts. Now what happened if we chose the incorrect setting? Instead of using this setting, we pop up to the next available setting. Well, instead of getting that four digits, we now only have three digits. We are ending up with 1.59 volts. If we go to the next step, we go one step up, we're then going to measure with one less significant digit. We're now measuring 1.5 volts. If we use our last remaining setting and we try and measure DC voltage at our maximum threshold, we're only going to get one significant digit. In this case, it could either be a one or a two. We are getting one volt. It ends up rounding to that one volt mark. This tells us absolutely nothing. It could be 1.01 volt. It could be 1.1 volt. There's so many different options, but we lose that precision. And that's the importance of the range. If we go back to that setting here, we can see that we get full range and we know exactly what voltage this battery is at 1.601 volts. That's great precision in order to tell us the exact voltage of the battery. In fact, one of these disposable batteries, the maximum voltage when they're brand new is exactly 1.6. Now the last voltage example that we have here is we can go directly into our battery pack. We can measure the voltage even though this ESC is powered, this electronic speed control, we can still measure the voltage that's being output by this battery pack. We have selected our 20 volt setting. We still have the lead right in the voltage port. We then go across this and we're measuring across our battery pack and we're getting 15.13, 15.14 volts of 
potential difference across that battery pack as well as these leads. Now, if we go and simply split the circuit, open up that circuit, so now that we have now sectioned it off, we can go select our different current setting. So this is now going to be at our 10 amp setting. We do have to move our lead, much like we talked about earlier in the video, to this port. And now what we can do is measure the current. Now I can take the leads of the multimeter and I can simply just connect it to the circuit here so that it's placing the multimeter directly in the circuit. And once I do that, you're gonna see it spike in power. So we're just about an amp and then it drops down to 0 0.07 amps. A very small margin of power being consumed as this speed controls at idle. And that's exactly how you measure the current in this specific system. Let's go ahead and measure current in that flashlight. Now that we've switched over to our light, we also switched our multimeter that we're gonna be taking this measurement with. So right now I'm in the 10 amp setting and I'm also plugging in the lead into that 10 amp port. I'm now gonna go and connect the lead so that I break the circuit. In the back of this flashlight exists the power switch. All I need to do to complete the circuit is to run the wire so that it exits out the back of this battery. This is simply a battery that gets inserted in here goes from that battery and goes right into the side of the case of this flashlight. I'll go and place the positive lead in any area here on the back of this battery, and then I'm gonna take the negative lead and apply it to the rim. And right away you can see the flashlight is lit, and we get a reading of about 63 milliamps. Now that we know that we're in the milliamp region, we're under the threshold of this multimeter, we can actually go down to this other setting. We're gonna change our lead from the 10 amp port and we're going to go into the milliamp port which is directly on this left hand side. I'm then going to go and select the milliamp setting of this multimeter and now I can run the test in this setting. I'm going to first go and connect the lead there on the back of the battery. I'm going to complete the circuit on the one side here and now we're measuring more precisely 65.9, 66.0 milliamps. Now we have a more precise measurement as to the amount of current that is being produced. Now one of the last things that I wanna be able to measure here is the continuity of this circuit. I wanna make sure that I have power going from the battery pack to our receiver port. I wanna make sure that electricity is able to flow through the switch as well as all the different interconnectors that are used in this circuit. I've had trouble with this in the past. I think I fixed it. Now I want to confirm that I have continuity where before I did not. What I'll do is I'll take the circuit leads. I'm gonna go and plug them into the typical ports here in order to measure continuity. I need to make sure I select the right setting. Your multimeter needs to have this. Otherwise you just use the resistance value and you're looking for a very close to zero ohm mark. All I want to do is select the setting that is going to give us noise when we have continuity, which means as soon as these wires touch, you get that beep. I'm going to go and place a lead on the negative terminal on this connector. I'm going to make sure I have it precisely in that location. And then on the other side of the lead, I'm going to try and connect it to the negative side of this battery pack. Right away, you can see that it's it's making that noise, it's telling me that there is continuity and also showing me how many ohms of resistance. It's not gonna be able to be very precise at that small amount of resistance. That doesn't really mean anything for me. All I wanna know is if I have the connectivity in order to make sure power can be delivered. And that's what this is showing me is true. And the last parameter that we want to measure is going to be frequency. This is where we can measure the frequency of any alternating current. In this case, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use this brushless motor here with a drill. We're gonna spin up this motor and it's a brushless motor that's gonna produce a specific frequency out of its leads known as back EMF. We're gonna measure that frequency, which really just represents the RPM that this motor is gonna spin up at. First thing that we wanna do is connect our leads. In the case of measuring frequency, we see that frequency is measured by using this port. We can then go ahead and select the frequency specific setting, and then we end up measuring frequency in terms of Hertz, and that's exactly what we want. Now all we need to do is connect up our leads. We're just gonna go directly in parallel with our output. 
we're just gonna measure the voltage. We're not actually consuming the voltage with our unit. We're just gonna measure that voltage and at the rate it changes sign. So it goes from plus to minus to plus to minus. That is gonna be the frequency that we're measuring. All we need to do now is simply spin up our motor with our drill and we can measure that frequency. Once we bring it to a stop, that is the value of frequency that that motor was spinning at. There you can see we are producing about 42 hertz. That pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you were able to learn something so that you can go ahead and use your multimeter for either your radio controlled application or even for something as simple as measuring a double A around the house. Like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.